Hi, I am John Barreda. Welcome to Honda Pro Racing TV. The Dakar Rally is one of the toughest races for man and machine. We join the team ahead of their 2018 program. Johan Bereda takes us on a tour of his CRF 450 Rally. We look back to the Bold Door where 150 Fireblade owners join Freddie Spencer and Jean-Michel Bale for the Fireblade Festival. And we look ahead to an all new lineup for Honda Racing in the Rhodes program for 2018. Dakar Rally is not just a race, it's an adventure. It's a man and machine against Mother Nature. You're taking a mobile race shop from Europe to South America, and you've got to move that race shop 800 kilometers every day. You've got to prepare the bikes. The rider's got to be mentally fit, physically fit. It's an ongoing battle of war. So the biggest challenge of Dakar is try to do all the days without make mistakes. 10,000 Ks crossing desert during 15 days. So this is make the race really special. The biggest challenge of the Dakar is always find your maximum of, of yourself and uh, you have to, to stay on the bike 12, 14, 15 hours each day. So the team structured around five amazing riders from five different nationalities. All five riders have the same goal in mind which is to get one of the five bikes, if not all five bikes, to victory lane. To finish is definitely a huge accomplishment for, I think, each and every one that uh, participates. Just uh, to finish Dakar for me is a big challenge. When a team and an organization like this comes together, uh, there is only one goal, and that goal is victory. The whole spirit of Dakar is def definitely a team sport. It's not an individual sport. You can't win this race by yourself. You need, you need a band of brothers to stick together to win the battle. It, it, it's not a race. It's, a, it's almost like, why, do, why does someone want to climb the Himalayas? There's a bug that just bites you, and once it bites you, there, there's no turning back. This is a Honda CRF 450, but this is a complete different bike of a standard CRF. Most important part, I think, is the tower. That is when we, we use all the navigation instruments, like uh, we have a roadbook, and then we, we use here a trip master. Here we have a safe uh, is, uh, apparel. And then also, an well, important part is the big tanks. And this bike, we use more than 30 liters. We need to, to have autonomy for more than 250 kilometers on special stages. And we have two front tanks and one rear tank. And this is, the, I think, the, the big difference respecting the standard bike. 
<laughs> then finally, the frame is different than, than, than a standard bike, a swing arm. Uh, all the parts, we use uh, big uh, tire for, for good durability, good suspension, more hard, good brakes. One of the main uh, differences the respecting a standard bike is the, the total weight. Uh, one uh, enduro bike uh, can be like 105-110 kilos and this is around 135-140 kilos. Also the sizes of the bike is, is a little bit more long to try to find more stability. This extra weight uh, you feel, but uh, we work a lot to, 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 to put uh, all the weight in the, in the right place. So important the balance on the both uh, sides in front and rear. So Dakar is a really tough uh, race. Uh, it's really important to, to trust uh, on the bike, to believe on the bike and you need to know all the small parts and to know really good this bike and to believe in this bike to, to arrive to the finish line. We are at the 2017 Bordeaux in a sporty car circuit. Twenty-four hours race in France is something a little bit special. It's always been like this since uh, many, many years. It's always a lot of people. It's al always a good race. You know, it's uh, very interesting. It's very long, and uh, it's always fun to watch. My very first World Championship 24-hour race, uh, in fact, the only one I ever raced in was here. I guess I realized that that Saturday morning in the morning warm-up, where I went around the track and it was completely full of people, you realize you're at something very special. It left this impression about the caliber of event it is, and also the seriousness with which the French public took this race and what it meant to them. It's something you, you want to win. Actually, we do a lap with all the customers with a new uh, CBR 1000 Fireblade. You know, for many people, it's a dream to ride on a 24-hour on a track just before the race. So it's going to be fun to see uh, the track and to see all the people around. So I think we're going to have a good time. Being here with the team was well, really about the, the Fireblade riders. One of the things that I really appreciate, and, and it truly is a privilege, is the fact that you maybe inspired them in some way, I have so many come up, but you give them something that's very unique. I told them, I said, when we're out there, I said, look up ahead as we're getting on the Mistral Strait. You're getting to see a, a line of sight that very few people get to see. Ah, uh, it's always, special to go on the track just before the race because you can see the track in a racing condition. It's an amazing experience and so after we did those two laps the look on their faces are priceless.
have one bike for three riders. It's not your bike, you know, so that's it's a little bit difficult because you have to get used to it. You have to get used to it and you have to give the best you have inside you for the team. As a rider, we are used to ride only for yourself, but in this kind of race, you know, you feel you ride with your teammate. Uh, come back to Honda Racing um, for a new challenge really, I've had a couple of years with the BMW Racing and uh, the new bike excites me. It's um, very similar DNA to the original Fireblade which I raced 10 years ago and then again you know 9 and 10 and um, obviously had some success with the bike and had some su success with the team so yeah just to come back to Honda Racing and try and challenge to win more TTs is uh, something I look forward to. I've come back to Honda Racing because um, a lot of different reasons really. Um, one being it's a proper factory team and road racing which there's very few of. Um, you can probably see in the background the organisation and the setup and the, the whole workshop's amazing so that's one of the reasons obviously with the new bike as well. It's another major factor, it's um, improving all the time and I think it gives us a really good good base to, to head into 2018 with and um, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah the bike in uh 2017 as a new model had uh, great success towards the end of the year in the British Championship and in uh, World Endurance so you know we're undoubtedly going to be getting some success with it in 2018 now it's moved on and been worked over the winter and uh, we're going to get to test the bikes at the start of 2018 and make more progress with it. Most exciting thing riding for Honda it has to be the, the, the fact of like I've already emphasised being in a factory team with the support Obviously my whole career I've rid for private teams and to be fair East Coast being one of them was a really really top level private team but this is the first time in my career I've actually had some um, factory support in a factory team with all the, the network around it and stuff and even like this doing the, the press stuff and everything is completely different so I think that's probably the biggest thing for, for me. Uh, I think I'm most looking forward to getting back to some of my old crew that I worked with, Jules and um few of the old boys that I used to work with 10 years ago have come back are still here and I'm looking forward to working with them again. What we enjoy most about road racing? Um, Prize money. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me this the other day actually if you if you like meet people or anything like say Joe Bloggs that rides a motorbike they can all go and do a track day or do you know what I mean? If they watch BSB or World Show Bikes, they can go to Donington, they can go to Silverstone and they can pay their money and they can have a go. They can't do that at road racing. They can't pay their money and set off down Bray Hill flat out or go into turn one at the Ulster Grand Prix at 140, 50 mile an hour. So I think it's that, that feeling of <clears throat> absolute, even the first time you go to the, the TT or the first lap out in practice, you still get that, like he says, down Bray Hill and that feeling, but you never turn up to, Brands hatch and turn into turn one and go, ah, you just like, you do 10 laps and the session's over and you, you don't get that, well, I don't get that same feeling, so I don't know why, but yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Like, you can't, you, you never turn up to even Cadwell or Oaten or somewhere and go, this is absolutely amazing. You don't, like, you, you set off down. The first time down the cool rain at the northwest, even you're sat there flat out for ages and you think, oh, this is mint. Uh, my, my main pull was just because my mate had done quite good at the Manx and I was faster than him. So I wanted to go at it and that was it then. I was in because I won the Manx. So that was the whole start of it. I'd never even heard of the northwest or the Ulster. But then when I won that and I wanted to go to the TT, 
everyone goes to the northwest and everyone goes to Ulster, so it all sort of happened by mistake. Why I went road racing, I'd done British Championship and I um, had a two or three tough years, got hurt and stuff. Obviously growing up in Northern Ireland, road racing is the big emphasis, you know, until now people like Johnny Ray that are, you know, absolutely smoking it in World Super Bike. All the road racers were the, the big stars at home, so you couldn't ignore the fact that was the, the number one sport. But I sort of wanted to go to the British Championship, and then for whatever reason it didn't work out, and ended up ended up by accident. But now it's it's my choice. Do you know what I mean? Rather than even I've had chances to go back to the British Championship since, and I, I just absolutely love road racing. I think once you're in the in the game of road racing, you're sort of hooked on it for life, and you'll be sat on a bank in at whatever age watching it, and that's what we see. We'll go over there and. It's, 60, 70 year olds that used to do the TT, still there supporting it, still there watching it and loving it and telling everyone that they, they were better than us. That's what we'll be doing. It was different in you, our You'll day. be doing that sooner than me though, won't you? Like you're, you're knocking on a bit now. Like you'll be coming to tell me how good you were <laughs> in 10 years' time. <laughs> um, will I ever get bored of racing though? Um, and I th I think it, obviously every career gets harder as you get on and like Ian says, when you get injured and stuff. I think that's the biggest thing in any sport, like if you can take two or three big bangs, which we've sort of both had our fair share of in different ways, um, and if you're still wanting to come back and, and jump another bit to get back pre-season testing, I think that's a good sign that you're, you're in the right job, so yeah. I'd say the most impressive fact was when he come back to win at Macau straight after his injury the last time. Even though it was I a trivia question about the TT. Oh, is it about the TT? <laughs> well, you've ruined it now. I was going to compliment it's you there right, so you can show it up your Cut that. <laughs> <It's not getting laughs> cut. Yeah, I think when he, when he come back after being injured at Macau that year, that was, that was pretty impressive. Killed me to say it to him, like, but that was, that was impressive. I know he's looking at me now to get eye contact, but he's not getting it. <laughs> Expectations for the Fireblade for 2018 has to be to win, do you know what I mean? Um, the bikes should be capable of winning, we're both capable of winning. That's, that's the aim that everybody has that's in the top, top of any other field. So um, I think if you go with the attitude of winning, it's 50% of the battle, do you know what I mean? So I personally want to win, and as I'm sure Ian does as well. So um, I'm really looking forward to 2018 and the effort that everybody's putting in to, to get us to do that, so it should be, should be a good year.